Okay, so we've started recording. Uh, by way of an introduction, my name is Yves Trepanier, and we I am the principal partner in um, Art to Public, which is a an art consultancy that uh, works with clients to help them manage uh, public art projects uh, like this one. And I'm here with... Uh, Carolina Vasquez Lazo, uh, and I am the assistant to Art to Public. And also Judy. Judy Chicaglioni, and I'm the administrator here at Art to Public. And we have another partner whose name is Kevin Bear, but he's not here uh, today. So Sam, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Sam Brown. I'm the marketing communications manager at Glenbow. Um, so very happy to see folks here and excited for this project to continue forward. And I'll let Mackenzie introduce herself next. She'll be leading you through this session today. Fantastic. Uh, my name is Mackenzie. Uh, I hail from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation. But I live here and work here and play here and create here in beautiful Treaty 7 territory in Calgary. And I also work with Sam at the Glenbow. And I'm the executive advisor of Indigenous Engagement. So I'm so excited to be introducing this project to you all. And I just want to say uh, and see if Eves, if you have anything that you'd like to uh, kind of start us off with. And if not, then I can jump into things. Um, no, I, I maybe I, I thought maybe Sam might have something to say about the kind of motivation behind this particular project. Um, in terms of the vinyl applique in the main entrance. Do you have anything to say about that or do you want to? I think yeah. Mackenzie's going to cover that in the slides that we have together, actually. So I might just leave that to her, but um, we're really excited about these uh, open calls for artist commissions. It really reflects the future that we see for Glembo, where we're an inclusive place for people of all backgrounds, different kinds of artists, different kinds of art. Um, and different experiences for our visitors. So I think Mackenzie will cover that as she kind of goes through this, but uh, we're just really excited about this work. So okay. thanks everyone for being here. Mackenzie, I think we'll turn it over to you, the master leader. Fantastic. Well, yeah, very excited to be chatting with you all today. Uh, so this webinar is on our public art competition for our vinyl applique mural within the main entrance of our new building. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a little bit of a brief rundown on Glenbow Reimagine, what is happening with the renovation, and then we'll get into some of the nitty and gritty details about the application for the vinyl mural, what is needed, what kind of help we can support the artists in applying, and then uh, we'll go into a little bit of a question and an answer period as well. So I did also wanna just remind everybody this session is being recorded. Um, we will cut out the front part where we did our introductions just so that then when we uh, post it, everybody can have their little hidden faces if that's what they were hoping for. All right, so first and foremost, right now, if you didn't notice, if you haven't been downtown as of late, uh, the Glenbow Museum is completing a massive renovation. So when we look at the building, uh, it was you know built in the 1970s downtown, and we are transforming this concrete pancake, so to say, into a dynamic and accessible community hub. Uh, we're completely reimagining this space. So as you can see on the top right here, uh, this was the old building and on the bottom right, this is what the new building is going to look like. So we've completely gutted everything out of the Glenbow and uh, we are completely reimagining the space for our collections, for our exhibitions, for our programs, and of course, for new events. So uh, this is where we're at currently. So if you head downtown, this is kind of what the building currently looks like. You can see that it's being gutted out. The gut has happened and now everything is being put back together. 
Uh, we're going to have this amazing skylight, which I'm so excited about. And the skylight creates this vertical gallery. Um, and within that vertical gallery, we actually have a custom piece made by uh, Faye Heavy Shield, uh, who's also a Blackfoot artist. Uh, and she's going to do this incredible 60 foot uh, custom made piece that's going to hang right in the center. So as you can imagine, you know, centering Indigenous voices is something that's very important for us as the Glenbow Reimagined project happens. And as we reopen, uh, we're really focused actually on accessibility, on truth and reconciliation and decolonization and responsible leadership. Those are our, we call them our lenses, that everything we do at the Glenbow has to fall into these three lenses with them. And so when we look at the new space, it's so exciting because there's going to be 34 new exhibition spaces of varying shapes and sizes. We're going to have at least five experiences for visitors to explore uh, back of house museum operations. So we're actually gonna be able to see where our conservators work, uh, where our collections and curation staff work. We're gonna have new programming. And so uh, we're going to have six dedicated programming spaces that people can sign up for that are going to be focused on, you know, youth, on adults, on adults without kids, on families, on seniors, as well as like mental health and wellness. And then we have four research and community spaces, and we're creating five spaces that are dedicated to art commissions. Uh, one of those spaces, of course, relates to the Vinyl Applique Mural. Another awesome note, uh, we're really happy that we've received an incredible gift from the Shaw Family Foundation. And this gift has allowed the new Glenbow to be free for everyone for all time, um, which is very exciting. Not very many muse museums in the world have free admission and we're excited to have free admission. Um, so therefore the new building that you've seen, the renderings of that fancy white building, it's actually going to be renamed the J.R. Shaw Center for Arts and Culture, which is the new home of the Glenbow. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear me use those those two terms, right? The Glenbow is the is the museum and where where I work, where we operate, but it is housed within the J.R. Shaw Center for Arts and Culture. So as we look at the Glenbow, you know, we're transforming the museum to be accessible, community focused and sustainable for generations to come. So one of the parts of Glenbow's commitment to amplifying diverse voices and specifically rooting ourselves within Treaty 7 as a place, uh, we are putting out a call to seek indigenous artists or artist teams uh, who have connections to Treaty 7 territory. Um, we're going to be creating a vinyl applique mural that will be the first thing that you see when you come into the new J.R. Shaw Center for Arts and Culture. Uh, we really want the artwork to obviously honor the original storytellers of these lands and, you know, enrich the museum's visual landscape, but it is not like it's not the brief isn't that it's a treaty seven mural for example um it's it's a lot more open and you'll be working directly with me in regards to that but this is just me saying this isn't like a treaty seven acknowledgement mural this is an indigenous mural by an artist who has ties to treaty seven territory uh, right now, what it's looking like is that the entryway mural will be installed for about two years. Then afterwards, we'll take it out and there will be another call for another Indigenous artist. This is one of the ways that we can make sure that we are always creating a new welcoming space for, for community members who come into the Glenbow, but also so that we're able to amplify and uh you know, showcase several different Indigenous artists during the time 
uh, that the Glenbow and the J.R. Shaw Center for Arts and Culture exists, which is forever, it will exist forever. Okay. Sure. Now we're going to get into a little bit of the site specifics um, so that you guys can kind of see what we're dealing with here. So I'll move back <laughs> just a couple of slides. So this actually here, you can see our newer entry entry point. So that those doors are on the right hand side here. So when okay. guests come into the new JR Shaw Center for Arts and Culture, the mural is going to be the very first thing that they see. You will see it is on two, like two walls. Um, and so it creates this really lovely landscape. Nice. The artwork will really greet visitors as they arrive. And uh, it will be a really important part of our new identity as a museum. Uh, it's going to be very highly visible. And it also gives the uh, guests an opportunity to appreciate the artwork, both when they come into the building, when they're leaving, and during their time in the building itself. So here you can see, mm -hmm. this is Stephen Avenue. So in that photo that we were looking, this is the cool window, right? That cool triangle window that comes out. So when you when you walk in to the doors, which are on a on a little bit of an angle, this is where the vinyl mural will be. So here's a little bit better of a of a picture of it. Um, so because it will be taken down after two years, that is why we are doing a vinyl mural. Um, this does often come with questions, you know, in terms of what do I need to do to have a vinyl mural? Um, there are many options. Uh, if you're a digital artist and you can work with vectorized programs, fantastic. It might be easiest to do it in a digitized version. However, um, we understand that there are also artists who don't work in digital mediums and would rather maybe paint pictures uh, or on large canvases and we can get them scanned and then turned into a vinyl mural. Um, those costs would have to be incurred during the uh, the actual costing of, of the mural. And this call out is for $45,000. So it's a pretty healthy budget that if that's uh, an avenue that we need to take, completely appropriate and we and we can do that so who can apply right now we are encouraging all qualified indigenous artists or artist teams 18 years of age or older you do have to have ties to treaty 7 in order to apply uh, this is important to us. We want to make sure because we are rooted within Treaty 7 as a place of the home of Glenbow and the J.R. Shaw Center for Arts and Culture, that we really want to make sure that we're amplifying communities who have traditional ties to this area. Um, so participating nations can include, you know, the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Bikani, Gaina, Amskapi, Bikani as well, even though they're down in the States. Borders are post-treaty and post-traditional territory. The Tutina First Nation uh, and the Stony Nakoda Nation, Tuniki, Bears Paw, and Good Stony, as well as Métis artists. We honor that Métis people have also been settling here for hundreds of years as well and have a very important part of uh, making Treaty 7 the territory that it is today. So you will be asked to include information regarding your familial and personal ties to Treaty 7 within your bio. So just so that everybody is aware of, uh, yeah, the participating communities within this call out. Okay, now we get to the important information. What do you need in your application to be successful? or potentially be successful. So what we are asking is that there is an image list. You can have up to 12 images of past work that you've done. 
I would recommend because it is for a mural that if you have examples of past mural work that that's that those are some of the items that you include um along with the items including your date a title media and the dimensions of the past and current work um if it does include public work Try to include the location. Uh, that would be super awesome so that we could see it as well. The other thing is having your biography, which includes your current contact information. So, you know, this is where you'll be asked to include information regarding your familial and personal ties to Treaty 7. Um, this can also be a CV. Um, however, you want to describe yourself as, as an artist, how you practice, what you've been doing, where you get your inspiration from. Um, it can be, you know, in paragraph form, it can be in CV form, it can be in a video form as well. We're accepting videos too. So if you're working in part of a team, uh, a brief resume of each team member and a description of like past experiences working together would be applicable here. Now, this next part is optional, but it does strengthen your application, is if you have any reviews or news articles from past projects, like maybe somebody came and they did a little news story about a mural that you did, fantastic. If you don't have that, even if you worked with an organization and they wrote you a glowing email that was like, you were the best Indigenous artist I've ever worked with in my life, include that because that helps to strengthen your application. It just... We ask for this because it's good for us to see um, how you've worked with other organizations in the past. And then this part isn't optional, so it's important to kind of have this, is uh, two professional letters of reference. So you can ask, you know, typically you ask like an employer, an organization you've worked for, maybe there's a community member who's really impacted by your work. Um, these letters can, you know, they don't need to be like, you know, they're they're not the professional letters that you need for like applying for like the Lieutenant Governor's Award, but to again, show your professionalism and uh, commute and communal impact and what other people have had to say about your work. And then this last part here, so in respecting oral traditions and traditional storytelling, the above, all of that, can be included in an oral or in a video format, um, but they need to include the above information. So I could do a video here and I could share my screen and share like, you know, a slideshow presentation of the work that I've done and kind of talk to it, talk about my biography a little bit. Um, and then I could submit that video. Uh, even if you have, like let's say you had somebody instead of writing you a letter of reference wanted to do a video of reference, that's fine as well. As long as it is zipped together and sent in the uh, the application link. So- But uh, can I just interrupt here mm -hmm. for a second? That's in addition to the other criteria here, the 12 images and so on and so forth, right? Is that how you- uh, like the video could include the 12 images and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. have to, do, they don't have to do both. No, no, yeah. no, only do it once. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Eves. Okay. So when you go to submit your documents and I'm gonna show you how you submit it, um, it's good that it's in a folder, uh, title it with like, your name or the artist names and of course you see you may include up to 12 images um you can include links to videos or other websites but try to keep it to a maximum of 50 mm -hmm. megabytes i mean mm -hmm. that's quite a large application anyways um and one submission per artist or artist team we're accepting one submission for artists or artist team Okay. okay. So when you go to the website, and I'll actually show you guys quickly. So here I've linked, I've clicked to the website. 
I'll end up scrolling down. And here is where you'll see we actually have three call outs right now. So if you know anybody else who uh, are textiles or like sculptors, send them this. But here is where we see our Treaty 7 application for the RFQ. So you can click and download the RFQ so you can take a look at it. I'll show you that as it opens up here. So this is where you just find out all of the information. But to upload your RFQ, you'll click this link and just a Dropbox will come up. So this is when it's important that you have something in a folder and you just drag and you drop it right there. So it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. If if there ends up being any issues, uh, feel free to send me a message and uh, we'll take a look at it. You can, do to, uh, you can do the same to us too. Carolina and Kevin can help with all that technical stuff. You guys have a whole community of support to help make sure that your application gets in. Awesome. <laughs> And of course, this is just the interface that I just finished showing you guys. So uh, Sam has also put the link into the group, but you can find the group, uh, sorry, you can find the link on the Art Public page as well as Glenbo's page. So these are just some important dates that we wanted to, to mention to people. So this is called an RFQ, which means it's a request for quotes. Uh, basically what that means is you do not have to send us, this is what I would paint on this mural, uh, or this is what I would have on this vinyl mural. You don't need to do that. We're, we're only asking for your bio, the 12 images, letters of reference, um, all the things that I had mentioned before. We're not asking you to actually do a mock-up design. That's called an RFP, a request for proposal, which will come a little bit later. So where we're at right now is this RFQ. So this is closing December 3rd. Um, so in about two weeks time, uh, probably less than that. I think we have like 13 days. So December 3rd at 5 p.m. This is very important at 5 p.m. That's when you need to have your stuff in the folder and submit it. What's going to happen then is there is an evaluation that will be going on. Um, there will be, you know, a panel of judges, those kind of things, who will go through all of the, the applications that we have. And what we're going to do then is there will be a long list of candidates and then a notification to potential candidates. So we're looking at the new year here. So in February of 2025, that's when you will be let known if you're moving on to the next stage. At that time, we will give you, hey, you're moving on to the next stage. These are the um, dimensions of the wall. Uh, and we want you to then support a final, to support and create a final design concept. Anybody who is asked to create a design concept will receive an honoraria for that work, for developing and, and creating a final design concept. Um, but the final list will be selected the week of May 26th, 2025. So we are looking at a, a little bit of time. No, I think you got those dates wrong. Oh, do I? Is it? Oh yeah, right. The adjudication will be on May. That's right, sorry. Yeah. Oh, all good. No worries. Thank you for your keen eyes. Um, so that is the information about the RFQ. Now, at this moment, I like to take some time and see about any questions. Uh, and so if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them into the chat or you can raise your hand, you can unmute. And if anybody has any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. 